Well, brothers and sisters, I'm sure you all enjoyed that most worthwhile. Now, our, our next speaker is Jeremy Corbyn, MP. He's got his uh, world use to speak in at this rostrum, been here nearly as often as Tony Benn. Jeremy. Friends, happy May Day, everyone. And this for us is a very special May Day because it's big, and I hope it's going to be as big as this every year. And it's big because we're honouring two very, very big people in our hearts and our minds and our inspirations, Bob Crow and Tony Benn, who both gave us so much in their lives and gave us so much inspiration. There's a lot I could say about Tony, and I will say a little bit in a moment. But I want you first to just think of what is May Day and why we're here. All around the world there are people demonstrating on May Day, a workers' day, demonstrating the power of the working class to achieve changes, campaigning in Bangladesh for safe working conditions, being blockaded by the police in Istanbul as they try to demonstrate in Tatum Square, fighting for trade union rights in Iran, fighting for trade union rights in the United States. People who are not yet organised in unions, working in fetid sweatshops all around the world where the IMF say the only solution to the economic problems of their country is a race to the bottom with no regulation, no minimum wage, no safety. What we do is march in memory of those that founded May Day, those that had an inspiration of a different and a better world based on human values, human rights, human justice, not exploitation, profit and war. Surely that is what unites us on May Day above all else. We have uh, lost two great people, as I said, and uh, virtually all of my conscious political life I've known and worked with Tony Benn. I first met Tony Benn when I was a young person in the unions and in the Labour Party in the late 1960s. And I met him when he was reflecting on what it had been like to be a minister in the 1964-1970 Labour government. And I thought it was quite amazing that a man who had sat round the cabinet table that had been in charge of major ministries, post office, technology, was reflective of the limited power of democracy to change compared to the unlimited power of capital to prevent that change taking place. And Tony campaigns, upper class shipbuilders working, workers cooperatives, all the things that we know will make a better life. And in the mid-1970s, when he was Minister for Industry, he was vilified as being the most unpopular man in Britain. He wasn't. He was one of the most popular people in Britain. The people recognised in Tony Benn, they had a minister that was determined to make industry work for the people, not the people work for the bosses in industry. Hence the support for cooperatives. Hence public ownership. And when the crisis in British Leyland came, he came to us. I was then in the engineering union for support and advice on how to bring about industrial democracy in the car industry. Tony was a man of the most amazing vision and as we know, a great diary. And when he told me in 2001, he called me that morning and said, um, I've decided I'm going to not stand again at the next election. How do you think this statement will sound? And then he read to me this uh, apocryphal word that he said, that he was leaving Parliament to spend more time on politics. I was very quiet and he said, are you still there? I said, yeah, I'm still there. He said, so you think it's terrible then, do you? I said, no, Tony, I think it's absolutely brilliant. 
and I know that you will spend the rest of your life being politically active. And my goodness, wasn't he just that? Because in Tony, we had a teacher, we had an educator, we had an inspire, inspirational speaker, we had a leader. Because he believed in people, he believed in democracy, and in Parliament, he would always challenge the power of Parliament being asserted over the executive, the power of the people being asserted over Parliament. And he had those famous questions. Where do you get your power from? In whose interest do you exercise it? And how do we get rid of you if we don't like what you're doing? That was Tony. And uh, I last had a conversation with him just before he died in hospital. It was desperately sad. His body was giving up, but his mind was so razor sharp. I just come back from a solidarity visit to people struggling for self-determination in the Western Sahara. Tony wanted to know what was going on there. He was president of the Stop the War movement. We talked about the ghastly conflict in Afghanistan, the ghastly conflict in Iraq, the whole ghastliness of the war on terror. And Tony spoke at hundreds of meetings, rallied and led us, but above all inspired us. What we have left behind is the memory of a great man who had been to the top of the mountain in every sense, politically in every other way, but never forgot from whence our movement came, never forgot how to inspire ordinary people. And I asked him once, how would you like to be remembered? He said, you know, Jeremy, I'd like to be remembered as somebody who gave hope to others. So in Tony's memory, we've got his books, we've got his diaries, we've got that infectious humour, we've got that way that he could motivate and inspire across the nations, across the generations, across the ethnic groupings. Fifty years in Parliament, and he could still go to Glastonbury Festival and have a massive and rapturous welcome. He could pack town halls all over the country, reading his diaries, and his memory. Let's learn from Tony one very wise word he said to me. Everyone you meet, whoever they are, whatever they do, whatever their job is, however big, small, powerful or weak they are, you can learn something from them. In unity we can achieve a great deal. International Workers' Day is for the whole world. International Workers' Day is to show we don't need a world of wars and nuclear weapons and the IMF and the economics of the madhouse that uh, starved a quarter of the world's population and allowed one busload equivalent to own 80% of the world's wealth. Let's preserve the resources and share the wealth. Protect human rights and human values. That can be only achieved by the organised working class through the trade union movement organised together to achieve that social justice. Tony Benn and Bob Crow were our great speakers in this. In memory, strengthen our union, strengthen our work, strengthen our spirit of May Day. Long live them and their spirit and long live May Day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Charlie.